ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಂಧಸ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಶಲಾಕೆಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಲಿತನ್ ಏನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪ್ರೇಷ್ಟಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ಇ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀಪಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟು ಬಿ ವಿತ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಟು ಶೇರ್ ಮೋರ್ ಸ್ಟೋರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇನಿಷಿಯೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ನ್ಯೂಯಾರ್ಕ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇನಿಷಿಯೇಷನ್ ಟೆನ್ ಮೆನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ವುಮನ್ took initiation and became disciples of Srila Prabhupada. At that time, Srila Prabhupada was addressed by his students and followers as Swami or Swamiji. So now Swamiji had 10 disciples, 11 disciples, 10 men and one woman. And uh, the two of them the couple were mike and jan and now they became mukunda das and jan became janaki devi dasi they were living together for some time as friends and they had come in contact with swami ji and they became gradually influenced by him up to the point they decided to take initiation and during the initiation swami ji had spoken about the four important principles of regulated principles that everybody in iskon follows and swami ji had just then introduced these to the students he was talking about this all along in his talks in his lectures and also in informal discussions and uh, he had also mentioned these uh, during the first initiation no intoxication no meat eating no illicit connection with women outside marriage and no gambling <clears throat> and chanting 16 rounds of hari krishna man this was very much what Srila Prabhupada introduced from the beginning. So the next day, after the initiation, the first Janmashtami was on September 8th, 1966. September 9th was initiation. Also, we know today, Srila Prabhupada's Vyas Puja, but that was not declared, not celebrated. And the third the day after that which is september 10th swami ji called his new disciple couple mukunda and janaki to come and meet him so they knocked on the door and swami ji they heard the voice of swami ji come in they pushed the door and walked in and they sat before him this was all happening in the 26 second avenue in the apartment first floor apartment where shila prabhupad used to live and then uh, shila prabhupad looked at them and said that uh, now you are initiated and he was rather referring to the two of them being together so immediately mukunda said Uh, swami ji isn't there love 
in Krishna consciousness? And uh, Swamiji said, yes. And therefore, I want you to get married. Actually, Mukunda and Janaki had had already discussed this subject a few days before, according to Mukunda's narration in the book, The Miracle in 26 Second Avenue. So, and they had made up their mind that now that they are following Swamiji and they have to get married, and there was a sort of an agreement, and then they looked at each other and they told Swamiji, yes, we are ready to get married. So Swamiji was very quick. He said, all right, so I will arrange this marriage and I'll conduct this marriage for you. And it will be two days from now. Very quick. Everything is happening very quickly. And so you can inform your family members and invite them to come. So it was all settled that the marriage was going to happen. And uh, so the next day and the following day was the marriage going to happen. So which is 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12th must be, September 12th must be uh, first ISKCON wedding that was going to happen. And Swamiji was going to connect. You should imagine that all of these Western followers, American followers, for them it's all very new. They are seeing one by one things happening. Swamiji has begun to influence them. He started telling them about chanting, about Krishna, vegetarianism. They've already become gradually following all of that. And now there was something called an initiation. And then uh, now there is going to be a wedding ceremony. <clears throat> so, as things were unfolding, they were also in, in great anticipation, looking forward and, and looking what's going to happen. So, um, Janaki had a sister who was living far away on the other part of America. So, and uh, she alone was going to come. Um, her mother had passed away. And her father had actually abandoned that family and got involved in another family. And so they were not so much in touch with. So Janaki invited her sister to come. Janaki had already written a few letters to her sister a few days ago, a few weeks ago probably. And she had started telling her that now they have come in touch with an Indian Swami and... Uh, uh, he was really a bona fide Swami. And so when uh, Janaki's sister, back there in her home, uh, her name was John, and so she heard about, oh my God, my sister has got involved with some Indian, uh, Indian saint, and uh, he's using, well, she's saying that he is a bona fide Swami. You know, these words, bona fide, we don't use that so much in English. Uh, in common English, maybe lawyers use that or something like that. But then, of course, we read about that in Srila Prabhupada's books and we extensively use bona fide spiritual master and all of those kind of things. It's very common. So uh, Janaki had already picked up this kind of language from uh, by hearing Swamiji talk about. And so she had written to her sister. And uh, so now she wrote, sent her... Uh, information maybe I don't know how quickly they did that and she was going to come the next day all the way from Oregon West United States to come to New York <clears throat> so um, meanwhile there was a conversation between uh, Mukunda and Swamiji what are the preparations that he has to do and uh, Mukunda asked uh, how should Janaki be dressed? Should she be dressed in white? As per American custom, a bride should be dressed in white. And Swamiji said, no, red. So it was all a new thing, red. And then uh, Swamiji said, you should try and get a red silk sari for Janaki. So Mukunda said, all right. And then he looked up in the yellow pages. Those days there was no internet. Right? There was no Google search on that. 
And so he looked up on the yellow pages and found an Indian sari store. And he went to the store and then he bought a red gold bordered Banaras silk sari for Janaki. And then the Indian salesman who was selling that, he knew that now he's got an American customer who's buying a silk sari. And then he started showing all kinds of jewelry and this and that. Do you want to buy this? Do you want? And then finally, Mukunda said, no, no, I'm just buying this and probably bought a ring or something. No, no, nothing else. <clears throat> and so this had happened. And then the next day, after all this conversation about getting married, uh, Janaki's sister arrived. And uh, so Mukunda and Janaki were continuing to explain to her about Swamiji and, her philo and his philosophy and how they have become influenced by that and, and all of those kind of things and preparing her. And then sh they were going to take her to go and meet Swamiji. And the next day was going to be the wedding. So they take her to 26 Second Avenue and they take her to the apartment on the first floor where Srila Prabhupada was saying it was noontime. It's important I must share that why is Janaki's sister and her experience important because Janaki's sister became later on Srila Prabhupada's disciple Yamuna Devi Dasi and the celebrated devotee in our in ISKCON, known for her wonderful services and contributions. And every day we hear Govindam Adi Purusham, her voice singing uh, and, and her recipes and the books and the cooking services that she did and all her wonderful contributions. So it was Yamuna. <clears throat> so Janaki's sister at that time, John, and now in future going to become Yamuna, she came and she was taken to the, and she describes in her memories and in her, uh, in her own book uh, what it was. So you should imagine it is September, it was very hot. New York gets very hot in summer. And uh, so she, Mukunda, Janaki and, and Janaki's sister walk up to go to that uh, apartment where Swamiji used to live. And it was about noontime, lunchtime. So they walk in and then they see there is a living room, that bigger space, but it was completely unfurnished. Just blank walls, white walls and wooden floor and nothing else. Normally you would expect in somebody's house there is a nice sofa, there is a television and carpet and all of those kind of things. Swamiji doesn't have any of those. And there were about 10, 12, 14 men sitting uh, around along the wall, near the wall. And uh, it was lunchtime and it was a place where they would all dine. And uh, every, all these young American followers, students of Swamiji, they are all sitting, they are having a plate in their hand and they are eating with their fingers. All of this is very, very strange for John, for, uh, you know, for Americans to see somebody's eating with the fingers. Actually, Mukunda and Janaki had prepared. Yes, yes, we do these kind of things and then you shouldn't be surprised. They had prepared her. And, and there was only one person. All these young men, young men were sitting around and there was only one man standing with a pot in his hand and serving food to them. And he was wearing a simple cotton dhoti and a bare chest, but there was something very radiant about him. There was something very spiritual. There was a force around him. And uh, the three of them walked in and then they, that was Swamiji himself serving. So they, he looks at them and he says, oh, please come, please come. And he welcomes them and he makes them sad. And then Mukunda introduces, this is Janaki's sister. Oh, very good, very good. Welcome, welcome. And then 
Swamiji speaks something nice, pleasant to all of them and makes them sit and then starts giving them a plate and starts serving food. So this is something that we must reflect on. Srila Prabhupada, a great Acharya, pure devotee, he's gone to America, left Vrindavan, 71 years old, sannyasi, very respected sannyasi back at home in Vrindavan. All the sadhus and all the temple Goswamis, they all knew uh, Prabhupada as a very respected uh, disciple of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. But now here he is cooking food and serving himself. Just see the compassion of Srila Prabhupada. And uh, although he looked very simple in his attire and simple in, in, you know, in serving food, but there was a certain kind of a radiance around him. Srila Prabhupada, your devotee of Krishna. So, uh, this is how uh, Yamuna describes her experience of seeing for the first time Sadhu, the Swamiji. And I think this is a, one of the important moments, very, very interesting moments in Srila Prabhupada's life, one of hundreds of such interesting moments in Srila Prabhupada's life. And then uh, uh, Yamuna at that time, there she was following some kind of a microbiotic diet influenced by Buddhism. There was a lot of Buddhist influence in America among the young people, and they would be very regulated and very don't use spicy food and all of that. And in, and so she was very, very, con, very worried that you know I'm going to eat all this. Uh, but then Swamiji wouldn't let her, and he would very affectionately, very lovingly serve, and she couldn't say no, and she had to eat and more and more and more, and she would say no, no, and but she had made up her mind. My God, this is the last time I'm going to ever eat like this. And uh, so, uh, but now, but Swami Srila Prabhupada served food all of, to all of them. And then he invited them to come and meet him in the room. So it was uh, Mukunda Janaki and his sister. And then he started making some plans, describing some plans for the next day's wedding. And uh, so, and he said that you must make all of these arrangements, decorating that very same room where they were all eating, that dining place would next day become the wedding place. So it's, it's not some new, uh, you know, very, very ornate uh, setup or something. It was in that simple, simple uh, living room that the wedding was going to happen next day. So uh, uh, Swamiji described that uh, you should get, so he told Mukunda and Janaki, that they should decorate the hall with some flowers strung and leaves strung. So you can imagine, you know, in India, this is known as Torana and uh, those kind of things, decorations that are made. And uh, Srila Prabhupada was uh, inducing his uh, Western, his American students to decorate and, and prepare for the wedding ceremony. And then he told, at nine o'clock, Janaki's sister should come and then help him in preparing the feast, the, the wedding feast. So, uh, so she showed up next morning at nine o'clock very promptly. And then uh, Swamiji had a list and he gave some five, six items and said, please go and buy these things. And so she went off looking around gr grocery store, food store in, uh, in New York City and trying to buy these things. She bought most of them except one item, which she somehow could not. She tried different ways. It was written HULD, H-U-L-D. That's what she had written or she understood and she could not figure out. And then she came back and said, so Swamiji was waiting for her and she asked, have you brought all the things? Yes, except for one thing. I couldn't figure out. Now no, no storekeeper could help us. What is this HULD? So Swamiji looked, oh, that's turmeric, does not matter. And, uh, you know, he probably had some quantity of that in the kitchen. And now he started getting involved and appeared. 
So this started at about 11 o'clock. From 11 a.m., Srila Prabhupada gets busy cooking till 5 o'clock continuously. So you can imagine uh, Srila Prabhupada cooking from 11 a.m. to 5 o'clock. And then uh, he, he was going to make many preparations. And then he asked uh, a Janaki's sister, so uh, do you know how to make a, a medium hard dough? And he had a bag of flour and some butter and water and all of those kind of things. And he wanted her to make a dough. And uh, medium hard dough, for her it was, so uh, Swamiji, do, do you want, uh, is, do, do you want uh, some, like a, a pastry dough or a pie crust dough? Something that she knows from, you know, from her American background. Swamiji says, oh, how old are you? And uh, he says, I'm 25. You're 25 in India? A five-year-old girl will know how to make a medium hard dough. Anyway, I will teach you. And then he himself starts getting and pouring water, butter and, and mixing and all of that. And then tells her. And then uh, Prabhupada's idea is that she, he, kachoris are going to be one of the items for the feast. And he is trying to get her to do the kachori. And then he cooks the potato and mashes them and gets her to mash. And then how to make that one and fold it. And he's teaching her all those kind of things. While she is trying to do all of that, he is busy cooking many, many more preparations in the kitchen. He's back and forth coming inside and going. And then she is trying to do to figure out how to do all these things. For her, it's it, obviously it must have been very, very new experience for her. And while she's doing all of that, and then uh, she's, she's very tired and it is hot, you know, summer, New York. And so she, uh, Swamiji, can I have a glass of water? Swamiji is inside the kitchen. He peeps out and he sees that uh, Janaki's sister is sitting there and trying to make these things and, and she's asking for a glass of water. Swamiji looks up from the kitchen and says, go wash your hands and come back. So she goes and washes her hands and comes back. When she comes back, Swamiji is there with a glass of water and gives to her. And then he says, when you are cooking for Krishna, you should not be thinking about your eating and drinking. But anyway, have this glass of water. So uh, she drinks the water and gets back. Again, wash your hands and comes back and, and begins to continue her work. And it's going on and on. And then Swamiji comes and takes what she has made and takes it inside and fries. And then a few minutes later, he comes back. You are not doing well. All these are breaking up. You know, the kachori, you have to seal it nicely. And then he puts in the oil and he comes back and shows everything has opened up. And then he shows, uh, Swam, uh, Prabhupada shows her how to seal it nicely, properly and make the right kind of a thing. And then she's learning all these things and and. She, and from 11 to 5, more or less, she's doing these kachoris, <laughs> preparing these things for Prabhupada to fry. And uh, so it's about 2 o'clock. It's very hot. She calls out, Swamiji, can I go for a cigarette for a few minutes? And then Swamiji peeps from the kitchen and, and tells, go wash your hands. So she leaves everything there, washes her hands. And comes back and then Swamiji is there and now he starts telling her when you're cooking for Krishna these are the principles that Krishna devotees follow and they don't take any intoxicant cigarette alcohol no meat eating and he tells about the four regulatory principles and tells her to go back to the cooking so she goes back to making a kachoris <clears throat> And so, uh, so now, uh, again, we must reflect on this uh, point that, see, Srila Prabhupada, how he has come to America, you know, getting all of these young Americans who are showing some interest in Krishna consciousness, want to serve him, want to be with him. 
and training them, teaching them simple things. Uh, Prabhupada needn't do this. He is a great scholar in Sanskrit, author of books, sannyasi, revered, elderly, very respected in Vrindavan. But look at all this Prabhupada doing to follow his spiritual master's order. So, uh, and then Prabhupada continues cooking and then she is making the kachoris. And then after a while, about four o'clock, Swamiji is bringing one by one items in and out as preparations. He made, according to one description, he made about 15 preparations. Enough for, according to one narration, for 40 people and according, according to another narration, enough for 100 people. So anyway, it's a lot of food. Swamiji alone made from 11 o'clock to 5 o'clock, all of these things. And so at about 4 o'clock when he's bringing back and forth as things are getting ready in his small kitchen, bringing it out. And Swamiji sees her. She's wiping her face, her arms, the sweat, you know, the perspiration because of the heat. So Swamiji stops and says, go wash your hands. So again she goes, wash her hands and comes back. And then again, Prabhupada tells her, when you are cooking for Krishna, you are not supposed to touch your body, your dress. You have to keep your hands very clean. And you have to, you know, all these kind of, see how, how Prabhupada is teaching her Shuchi principles, how to prepare in a very clean condition for Krishna. So all of this happens still five o'clock and she is quite exhausted. But Swamiji is full of energy and now he comes to the living room there and then Mukunda and Janaki have come. And Janaki is now wearing the red gold border Banaras sari. And according to Mukunda, she was dazzling. <clears throat> and so, and then she was seated there and then Mukunda was seated. Mukunda was also wearing white, white uh, slacks and, and white uh, shirt. And uh, so both of them were seated. And uh, there were about 30, 40 guests who had assembled there. Mukunda had invited some of his friends and the other regular students of Swamiji. They were also there. And uh, the wedding was going to happen. And now Swamiji comes back. He sits there after all the cooking, full days cooking. Now he comes back and there is a small fire havan uh, set up, made. And then Swamiji begins to talk. And then uh, Srila Prabhupada is conscious that he is a sannyasi and he is conducting a marriage. Why is he doing this? So, uh, uh, you know, we know very well in India, uh, the a sannyasi may not even visit a marriage hall, a marriage ceremony. So sannyasis don't mix with grahastas and marriage ceremony and all of those kind of things. Whereas here Srila Prabhupada himself is conducting the marriage. So Prabhupada is conscious that somebody may criticize this and, and much later Srila Prabhupada writes in the purport. Uh, of one of the Bhagavatam cantos. I'll read this purport. Sometimes we are criticized because although I am a sannyasi, I have taken part in the marriage ceremonies of my disciples. So exactly what Prabhupada was doing. And he's addressing that. In, he addressed this in many places and this is one of the purports. It must be explained, however, that since we have started a Krishna conscious society, and since a human society must also have ideal marriages, to correctly establish an ideal society, we must take part in marrying some of its members, although we have taken to the path of renunciation. This may be astonishing to persons who are not very interested in establishing Daiva Varnashrama, the transcendental system of four social orders and four spiritual orders. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura, however, wanted to re-establish Daiva Varnashrama. In Daiva Varnashrama, 
There cannot be acknowledgement of social status according to birthright because in Bhagavad Gita it is said that the determining considerations are guna and karma, one's qualities and work. It is this Daiva Varnashrama that should be established all over the world to continue a perfect society for Krishna consciousness. This may be astonishing to foolish critics, but it is one of the functions of a Krishna conscious society. So, Srila Prabhupada spoke at the beginning of the fire sacrifice, the marriage, the wedding ceremony. And then uh, <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada lit the fire and as the fire wood started crackling, uh, Mukunda and Janaki had come and they were wearing a fresh garland. Swamiji had instructed them to wear the garland. And then he told them, now you may uh, now, uh, first he told them, now you repeat after me. He tells Janaki first. You repeat. Mukunda, I accept you as my husband and agree to serve you all my life. And makes Janaki repeat that. I'll be your wife and accept to serve you all my life. And then he turns to Mukunda. And then he says, now you repeat. And makes him repeat. Janaki, I accept you as my wife and take charge of you in all conditions of life. So Mukunda repeats this one. And so the, this kind of a, uh, you see the, the Indian wedding, all the mantras that are there, the essence of that is more or less this kind of an agreement and understanding and acceptance mutually. And after making them uh, repeat this, uh, Srila Prabhupada tells them to exchange the garlands. And they exchange the garland. And then uh, Srila Prabhupada tells Mukunda to cover Janaki's head with her sari, red sari, and apply uh, vermilion, kumkum. So there was kumkum, some of them had arranged. And Mukunda applies that to Janaki. And now, uh, and then, the, they, and then Prabhupada tells them to exchange their seat, seating. So they move across and they sit. And then Swamiji begins the fire sacrifice, chanting the mantras, chanting Hare Krishna. Everybody is watching and the smoke is, is spreading and all over into the room and everyone is uncomfortable. The doors and the windows are shut because, you know, if the smoke goes out, and neighbors may get worried and, and all kinds of things. So everything, everyone is uncomfortable. Swamiji is not at all disturbed. He's so happy involved in the chanting of the mantra. And then in the end, he says, now you're married. And then the next important part of the fest of the wedding ceremony is the feast. And Swamiji brings out and, and there are a few other helpers helping him and they are serving. And usually on, on an everyday basis, there was, was a simple diet of rice, dal, sabji. But today there were 15 items and very, very delicious items. And you can imagine Srila Prabhupada has cooked and offered it to Krishna. How delicious prasadam it must be. And everybody was so happy eating and all of that. And then after the big feast is served, uh, Mukunda Janaki, and a few of the, her, their friends, they all head out. They go back to their loft and they have another small gathering because the wedding has happened for Mukunda and Janaki. And while back here, Swamiji, and there are a few boys who stay back and help him clean up the whole place. So we can see how Srila Prabhupada began classes, began Kirtan and introduced initiation and now he got uh, his first disciples to get married and all of these kind of things. And then there was a discussion among the devotees. Now, what does it mean that we are initiated? And some of them would talk. Now, it me, it's, I've heard that being initiated, we have to help Swamiji spread God consciousness uh, to more people. You know, all these kind of talks were going on among themselves because they had heard these uh, kind of instructions from Srila Prabhupada. So uh, again, it becomes the 
routine, uh, Prabhupada's classes, chanting, and then uh, all of this is happening. Now it is one month later, October 1966. Prabhupada is in his room and there's a knock on the door. And Swamiji says, yes, come in. Mukunda walks in, sits in front of Swamiji and he says, Swamiji, for a long time I have been thinking, Janaki and I have decided to go to India for a while. Swamiji's eyes widen, shocked, and he's silent for a moment. Can you imagine? Prabhupada is getting them all, you know, initiated, marriage and all of these kind of things, getting them to understand and so that they will help him uh, spread Krishna consciousness, build up the movement. And suddenly, two of them are saying that they want to go to India. And uh, so he's naturally surprised to hear this. And so he's silent with wide eyes, he's hearing. Uh, and then Mukunda begins to explain that how he has always been fascinated by India and he wants to go to India and he wants to really experience India and the Indian spirituality and all of that. I mean, actually we know Srila Prabhupada, he has brought the purest form of Indian spirituality to America. And these two American couple, they want to go to India to look for Naturally, Prabhupada must be worried, you know, what's going to happen today. But he's very gentle. And uh, so uh, then so Mukunda asks, is there anybody you want us to meet in India? Any of your acquaintances or anything? And then uh, Swamiji looks and thinks for a moment and he says, yes, there is somebody. And uh, he gives the name. You should meet uh, Chandrasekhar Sharma. So uh, Mukunda is looking at it from his pocket. He pulls out a pen and then he's writing down. Is there an address or a phone number? And then Swamiji reaches out to his bag, pulls out a small address book and then tells him what is the address and the phone number. And it is Old Delhi. You know, it's some Delhi contact, something Swamiji has said. And uh, so Mukunda doesn't know what more to say and then uh, he just says, uh, Swamiji, uh, you must try to open a temple in the West Coast in California. And uh, there are a lot of people who are very open minded and uh, they are very interested in uh, Indian spirituality. And uh, some of them are, you know, interested in Sanskrit and all of that. And uh, when they hear you, I'm sure they will be lot of people who will be eager to you know understand that and uh, Sanskrit and the yoga and the chanting and all of that they will be very receptive to that so Swamiji is hearing all these things and then uh, and a little more pleasant talk happens and then Mukunda so I'm leaving Hare Krishna and he bows down rises up Swamiji is watching he gets up and he doesn't know what more to say, how, to, how else to say goodbye. And he turns around, walks to the door, holds the door and is about to open. And he hears Swamiji, Mukunda. He turns around and Swamiji says, Mukunda, if you can help set up the temple in West Coast, and that will be a very great service to Krishna. So Mukunda is thinking, oh my God, I just mentioned that there is a good opportunity to open a temple in West Coast. Uh, but his, his, his mind is set that he has to go to uh, India. In fact, Swamiji asks, when do you want to go to India? And Mukunda says, not tomorrow, the day after. So, so early. Yes, you're going to fly to India. No, no, I'm going to go back to my you know place where I grew up, meet some of my uh, aunt and uncle and, and uh, meet some people, and then in a short while go to India. 
So Prabhupada had just let him go and just before he goes away, he makes this attempt and says that if you help uh, set up, can you help set up, a, open a temple in the West Coast and that will be a great service to Krishna. And so Mukunda looks at Swamiji, smiles a sort of acknowledgement and then opens the door, shuts the door behind him, walks down out in the streets of New York City. So you can imagine Swamiji must have been disappointed and he brought them all together and brought them to this and he's expecting them to be part of him and, and help him spread, build this movement. But here, after all the efforts that he had put in, conducted the marriage, their initiation and cooking, the feast and all of that, two of them going away and what will happen to them if they go to India? They'll hear all kinds of philosophy. They will be lost. In the, in, the, in the myriad varieties of Hinduism that they are going to experience. So Srila Prabhupada must have been worried. But that's what happened. But Krishna had a different plan. What happens to Mukunda and Janaki and what happens to Swamiji? Further, we will take up in the next class. Namaste. Hare Krishna.